Hello everyone and welcome back to my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. This is the second round of Season 3, the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. That's all the rhymes I've got at the moment. Already in Azerbaijan and it's only the second round and that's kind of crazy. But uh, anyway, um, we've already had an issue this weekend in practice. Uh, we got a puncture the moment we were given control of the car uh, on, uh, I think it was a qualifying program. And... Uh, yeah, we immediately spun into the wall, um, got disqualified for driving the wrong way as we were trying to turn the car around, and just for good measure we got rear-ended uh, by you Max Verstappen. To your rear wing. Suggest we box to repair it. The rear diffuser has incurred a lot of damage. It's in a very bad... And uh, yeah, that took Verstappen out of it's the session. It's time to remind ourselves of our top three, who are Sainz, Button, and Lando Norris. But uh, thankfully, it looks like we have decent pace. Anyway, purchasing an upgrade to tire wear, and uh, that will be on the car uh, by uh, the next round, hopefully. And uh, there is the R&D chart heading into this one. Huge improvement um, since last episode. We are now the second fastest team, only behind Red Bull. A decent size gap, but hopefully uh, we can uh, outdrive that. Q1, we're down the order a little bit uh, in eighth position. Uh, so uh, we've got some time to find uh, if we want uh, any chance of pole uh, later today so uh, yeah we'll need to to work on that but uh, decent pace Jensen Button up in fourth so uh, yeah we're looking good uh, for this weekend I think this is a track we can do quite well at um, despite not seeming like the kind of track uh, I would like it is one I tend to go well at so it's a bit of a mystery uh, but yeah it's uh, yeah a bit strange um, don't know how to explain that one. Anyway, let's uh, move on uh, to Q2 and uh, we will again skip straight uh, to the end. Uh, not much happened down in 10th position, so not finding the time uh, that we need to uh, in Q2. Uh, Jensen Button drops a spot as well. Uh, he is fifth fastest in this one, but once again, it's the usual uh, suspects making it into Q3, the Ferraris, McLarens, Red Bulls, Mercedes and Samurais. So straight into Q3 then and uh, we will get our lap uh, underway uh, in Q3 and we'll see what we can do in this session. So uh, as we uh, go get through the first few corners nice and cleanly. Uh, I think maybe the, the reason I, I go so well here is uh, the entire sort of first half of the lap is all just 90 degree corners. It's very stop and start which is... Uh, sort of much more my style. The back half of the lap a little bit more complicated uh, and there is one particular spot where I lose uh, a lot of time and uh, it's been where I've been losing time uh, all weekend so far. So as we head into the castle section, strangely enough it's not here uh, where I lose time through this very tight uh, part of the circuit. Uh, where at the corner I lose time is this one here. For some reason coming off the exit there I just never get a good run. I think I go too deep into the right-hander, which compromises the line uh, heading into the left-hander uh, out of that chicane. So I think that's why I lose so much time there. But uh, it's quite ridiculous um, how much time I've been losing uh, in that sector. Uh, but anyway, uh, we got through there okay that time. And now as we uh, head on to the straight, we'll see what kind of time Fantastic. we set here. That was the fastest lap. And with qualifying complete, Let's review our top three today. The Scientist, Science, and Sergio Perez. Goodbye for now then, but we're really just getting started. Make sure to join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. And out of nowhere, we're on pole by almost eight tenths. What? A warm welcome to all of you watching at home to today's Azerbaijan Grand Prix, and a race that in its short history has already proven no stranger to drama. A fourth row start is just about as likely to give you a podium as a pole position would. And remember, in 2017 and 2018, both Lance Stroll and then Sergio Perez took surprise podiums here. Baku City Circuit then, an unpredictable 3.7 mile track around the streets of the Azerbaijan capital. 20 turns for our drivers to navigate today, including the infamous Turn 8, one of the tightest and most challenging corners of the season. And as always, a man with plenty of racing experience joins me in the commentary box. Today, it's Anthony Davidson. Tell me, Ant, you're no stranger to surviving the melee of Turn 1. So how do you keep out of trouble when there's so much going on around you? There are three main things to worry about there, Crofty. Positioning, awareness and discipline. First, you have to put your car in a bit of space and make sure you have room to react to what the others are doing. 
Then you have to watch your mirrors and listen to the sounds around you to get a sense of where everyone is. And finally, just don't get too greedy. Just because a gap exists doesn't always mean you should go for it. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. The scientist lines up on pole position, and talented Spaniard Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Button, Max Verstappen, and Hamilton, Leclerc, Norris, Ricardo, and Nikita Mazepin, Gasly, Fernando Alonso, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Ocon. Russell, Stroll, Nicholas Latifi, and Valtteri Bottas. Sato, Mick Schumacher, Joe, and Nobuharu Matsushita. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. All right, we will certainly try to do that strategy for this one uh, gave me a headache for some reason I could not uh, figure out what I was doing but eventually uh, we settled on a two stop soft flyers to two sets of mediums uh, will be uh, the strategy so uh, let's go ahead and get this race underway five red lights and it's lights out and away we go for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix and it's a fairly ordinary start for us we've got very bogged down on the initial launch and Science down the inside into turn one we're going to try and hold it around the outside we can't do it and Science gets into the lead he defends though into turn two we're going to go around the outside of Science into turn two he squeezes us into the wall and now we lose a rear end or traction and further damage the front wing Caution. Virtual safety car has just been deployed due to a build-up of debris on the track. And the VSC is deployed, but what on earth was Science doing there? He got so much understeer uh, through turn two. Um, and yeah, he was on a, a compromised line. Uh, but, you know, you still have to, to leave space for the car on the outside. And uh, yeah, we had no room to work with there. And then we made things worse for ourselves uh, in the traction zone, trying to put the power down. and. Uh, sending ourselves into the wall, uh, damaging uh, the front wing further. He was on board with Button, and uh, he was actually able to get through that, and now he's actually right on the rear end of uh, Carlos Sainz. We're going green. Maintain positive delta until the green flags. And uh, if it wasn't for the VSC, he may have been looking to make an overtake there, but anyway, um, we are in a very awkward position now because the VSE is ending and we've got a whole pack of cars behind us. We have no front wing and we're about to enter the two fastest corners on the circuit and we cannot go through here flat out. So uh, we just have to hope we don't get rear-ended. But uh, it looks like uh, that did not happen as uh, Max Verstappen has no front wing behind us. Uh, I didn't actually even feel it at the time. But uh, Sergio Perez <laughs> threads the needle there. Wow, that was... All mightily close, but Max Verstappen smashes into the back of us and uh, loses his front wing, and uh, he will be. Front wing damage, box for a new one. No need to worry about tire condition for now. Everything's looking good. Uh, he'll be coming into the pits, uh, just like us. So, yeah, thankfully we don't have diffuser damage from that uh, hit, but yeah, the new front wing is required, and uh, yeah, that is uh, an unfortunate way to get this race started. Uh, go, yeah, go, go. another bad start. That's three in a row now. We've got a bad start in Abu Dhabi, a bad start in Bahrain, and now a bad one here. I don't know what's going on. Uh, like I said uh, previously, starts are usually one of my strengths, but for some reason, they're just not working for us today. Uh, or recently. This lab. We can use DRS when you are within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's something, if uh, I've changed the way I do formation laps or, or what it is, but anyway, we'll uh, try and sort things out for the next round, but uh, currently we are chasing down uh, Max Verstappen who is making the move on Joe Guan Yu and he gets through uh, before he gets to turn two. Now down the inside uh, for ourselves and uh, we get the job done too and uh, move ourselves up Good. Good job. Nice overtake. Uh, into uh, 20th position and uh, very soon we'll be trying to make that 19th as uh, we've caught up to uh, Mick Schumacher uh, who was just overtaken by Verstappen and uh, now we'll try to make our way past as well. We'll go to the outside 
and uh, we'll get the job done as Matsushita is uh, currently under attack from Verstappen. Verstappen gets through, we go up the inside of Matsushita and we get through as well and uh, make two overtakes in two corners there. No threat of rain for the time being. Conditions looking good. Dry seem like the fastest tyre at the moment. Okay, that's not quite the uh, radio message I wanted to uh, select there. Tyre condition is still looking good. Uh, that's the one. Uh, just making sure the car is still in good nick. Uh, didn't make any contact there, so we are good to continue. Now, as we uh, continue to fight our way through the field, we get past Valtteri Bottas and uh, move our way. Uh, past him and up into 17th position uh, following Verstappen through quite nicely here uh, just taking his DRS when we can get it and uh, overtaking cars uh, basically whenever he does and uh, yeah it's working well for us uh, at the moment so uh, we'll try to continue this uh, for as long as we can as uh, he gets down the inside of Nicholas Latifi. Latifi still holding his own around the outside and uh, now we are trying to make the move down the inside of Latifi. We've got a good run here, but we don't really have anywhere to go with it. Latifi's on the right, but Stappen's in front. And there was a wall on the left, so we were all boxed in there. But thankfully we were able to uh, find a gap uh, in the middle uh, of all of that and uh, get past Latifi. So uh, moving on again, we uh, catch up to uh, Marino Sato, uh, who's currently... Uh, being overtaken by Max Verstappen. We get the DRS, uh, which will help us close the gap uh, along the uh, enormous straight here in Azerbaijan. We'll make the move around the outside, a bit cautious, uh, but we will get through on Sato and we move ourselves up another position uh, in this race. So uh, steadily climbing our way forwards and now uh, we are around the outside of Max Verstappen. We'll have the inside line for the next right-hander if we can uh, get the traction, which we do. And now we make the move and get There's through. There's been an incident on track, but officials aren't looking to push for a safety car right now. Just be careful. Well, Check your uh, MFD for a new strategy option. Not, uh, not sure what that is Understood. about. But uh, anyway, we don't want that we'll strategy. One more stop today. One stop left in our strategy. Your pit window opens in 15 laps time. So uh, yeah, we'll just push on and uh, see how many more positions uh, we can gain in this race as uh, we navigate our way through the castle section. It's, uh, it's scary every time uh, through that part of the track. And no tight concerns at the moment, just focus on the driving. Uh, I'm literally asking Jeff every lap to make sure we don't uh, make contact with uh, any of the walls there. But uh, thankfully uh, on this occasion we're able to get through and uh, uh, not make uh, any, uh, not uh, come out with any damage. But anyway, uh, Max Verstappen finds his way back past in the DRS and uh, he is uh, very very quick in a straight line with the rear wing open but uh, very slow through turn one we've got a great exit we're going to go up the inside uh, into turn two and we'll get the job done there and uh, now we can uh, potentially look at uh, overtaking Esteban Ocon uh, we've got the DRS open so uh, let's see if we can make the move to the inside it's a bit of a late move Ocon defends very late there but we managed to get up the inside uh, without making contact and uh, we get through on Esteban Ocon uh, who will now uh, be between ourselves and eighth Verstappen. Place. You're in eighth place. Stroll ahead. Gap to car in front is 4.9 seconds. So uh, hopefully that can he can uh, help us break away uh, from Verstappen. Uh, but it's not Lance Stroll we catch up to. It is Antonio Giovinazzi uh, in the other Aston Martin. I guess Stroll must have uh, made a pit stop. But uh, yeah, we uh, catch up to Giovinazzi and uh, we have to wait uh, for the straight uh, before we can actually uh, attempt uh, to make an overtake pits. any pits anyway. Pits. So uh, we don't need to worry uh, about that. We can just push on uh, with our race and uh, see how uh, the rest plays out. But uh, we're in a good position now as uh, Button comes in for his pit stop and he's got to make a front wing change. Uh, so that is unfortunate uh, for Jensen and uh, that will cost him uh, quite a bit of time in the pit lane. Uh, plus whatever time he's already lost. And that is Lance Stroll uh, with an issue. And uh, he is now out of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix uh, with smoke uh, absolutely pouring out of that Mercedes engine. Uh, been a bit unreliable with the Mercedes engine so far. Ricardo with a DNF in uh, the first round and Stroll. The right tire has shredded. You've lost the front right. Uh, with the time. But we got a puncture from nowhere. We didn't make any contact with the walls. The tyre wasn't that worn that we should be needing to worry about the puncture. 
spontaneously the right front just blows up. What happened? I'm so confused. We come into the pits and get new fire on. Uh, no damage okay, to the car, so we don't need a new front wing or anything exit. like that. We'll but a penalty for dangerous driving if you cross over into the track. That was incredibly strange. We lost a lot of time in the pits as well because you get limited to, to 30 kilometers an hour when you have a puncture uh, in the pit lane. We're but sat in 16. Latifi is ahead of you. That is so weird, and it's the second time this weekend as we go around the outside of Latifi there. Second time this weekend we've got a, a spontaneous puncture. I remember it happened in practice too, so uh, yeah, that was really strange. But uh, anyway, we make our way past Pierre Gasly. We actually made a bit of contact with uh, the back of the Alfa Tauri uh, in a straight line as we tried to moment. cover that Just one off, but on uh, we don't have any uh, damage from that luckily as uh, Mazepin and Norris uh, going wheel to wheel and uh, making contact more than a few times and Norris comes out on top there as Mazepin had to uh, collect the car on the inside so uh, yeah that has uh, I don't know if that's got uh, if Mazepin's car has any damage but now he's uh, seems very slow uh, through the castle section uh, we tried to uh, go for a dive around the outside but uh, the corner the next corner tightens up so much that we can't really make anything work there so uh, instead we're going to go for the dive into the, the last real corner of the circuit and uh, we get the move done on Mazepin. So yeah, I think Mazepin must have some form of issue because uh, he was so slow through those corners um, that uh, yeah, he just he has to have some form of damage uh, to that car. But not holding him back in a straight line though uh, because he is uh, really uh, soaring up to the back of us and blazing past and Pierre Gasly gets through as well. We go for the dive up the inside to try and take the position back. Bit of contact with Mazepin at the apex, but we'll get through as uh, we've got a bit of understeer there, carrying a little bit too much speed. Uh, collision and warning, but no harm done. And uh, we maintain the position ahead of uh, the pair of them. Now we uh, focus our attentions uh, back on the battling front, and uh, we are. Uh, currently watching the fight between Orlando Norris and Esteban Ocon. DRS open for us as Norris goes to the inside. We have so much extra momentum though. Look at the slipstream and the, the DRS power that we have around the outside into turn one. And that's a double overtake on Norris and Ocon. And that is two for the price of one there. And uh, that was a satisfying move. We could see that one coming from a long way back. But uh, we managed to make it work. We catch up to... Uh, Antonio Giovinazzi once again when we get past in a straight line. Apologies for uh, the audio uh, Xbox recording uh, doing its usual thing there. Anyway, continuing on once again, thankfully uh, those audio issues go away. That's probably almost as bad as it's ever sounded. Um, so hopefully that's not uh, a bad sign. But anyway, we are uh, pushing on and uh, currently putting the pressure uh, on George Russell. But uh, even compared to the Williams car, we cannot get a good run out of the castle section um, for some reason. And we just, I just, I've never gotten that corner right, and uh, that is uh, continuing. But you can see uh, we're a lot faster through uh, this section of the track, so we just need to uh, to wait for our opportunity. And we've even got a run here, but we can't really do anything with it, so we have to sort of lift off and uh, wait a bit. And uh, that's cost us some momentum, but with the DRS uh, that we'll surely get uh, for being this close, we will be able to make our way past uh, George Russell, and uh, we'll do that on the left hand side. And uh, we get through on George Russell, and uh, we move ourselves up uh, another position uh, up into ninth at the moment. So, uh, yeah, things going pretty well for us. I reckon we can maybe get top six, top five uh, in this race if. Uh, if everything else goes our way, but uh, given uh, the nature of this race so nice far, Good job. Uh, it's been a pretty difficult one. We've had the odds against us uh, so far, but uh, anyway. Don't panic just yet, but uh, we've seen a problem at our end. We're looking into it. Oh, for goodness sake, commentator's curse at its best. Uh, we have potentially a mechanical issue with this car. We haven't had one for more than a season. Our last DNF was at Sochi and uh, that was when we uh, had that collision with Matsushita uh, when he came charging into turn one with three wheels on his wagon and uh, speaking of three wheels on his wagon we've now got a puncture on the front left after a bit of contact with the wall there and uh, further a hit and we're out. Mechanical failure with the engine and that's it. 
we needed to retire. There's been an incident on track, but officials aren't looking to push for a safety car right now. Just be careful. My goodness. Day done. We've got a puncture, we've got smoke pouring out of the engine, and we're out of the race. In the end, that uh, that little mistake and and hitting the wall and getting that that puncture means nothing uh, because that uh, engine was always going to fail. But uh, that's so disappointing. That's a shame. Are you okay? That was a big one. Confirm you're okay, please. I'm fine. Here we are then, it's victory in Azerbaijan. Great work from the whole team here at the track and back at the factory as well. And some pretty handy driving for good measure. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? I think we'll chalk this one up to a deft touch on the brake pedal. That's allowed them to challenge down the inside into the braking zones. And ultimately, if you do that often enough, you end up winning the race. It was great to watch as well though, wasn't it? Forget strategy, forget tyre management. Who doesn't love a good old-fashioned scrap? As the winners make their way up to the podium, one can only imagine the celebrations that will take place at McLaren tonight. Congratulations to everyone on the team, securing the win and proving they're a force to be reckoned with out on the track. So it is Daniel Ricciardo who wins the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Second place goes to Lewis Hamilton with Sergio Perez in third. Great result for Lewis Hamilton who moves further ahead at the top of the table. Some amazing talent out on the track today. But Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? Daniel Ricciardo certainly impressed me today. An incredible performance. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship, Mercedes moved to the top of the table. Meanwhile, Ferrari have improved their position. A strong weekend from them as they fight their way towards the top. Well, Ants, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Well, that is it. No highlights for this one, but uh, yeah. Hamilton with P2 here uh, takes or retains the championship lead, but uh, yeah. Carlos Sainz, P4, Max Verstappen, 5th, Charles Leclerc, 6th, uh, Jensen Button, 7th. I, I, I don't know when he got that front wing damage, I uh, never actually found that. Uh, by the time I got to the to the end of the race, I actually forgot to, to look for that one, so yeah, uh, that's unfortunate. But anyway, um, yeah, he, he could have done a lot better. Uh, by the time he factor in the 25, 30 seconds, he would have lost changing that front wing. Um, in yeah, making that extra stop, uh, in addition to the time he would have lost driving around with a broken front wing, uh, he would have been right in amongst it uh, and fighting uh, for the top five. But yeah, that's a shame uh, for him. But anyway, Antonio Giovinazzi gets into the points for Aston Martin. Uh, that's uh, a big one uh, for them. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, George Russell in the points for Williams as well. Uh, P8 uh, for them. And uh, Mazepin as well, uh, down in ninth. Uh, that covers everyone in the top 10 now, but uh, that's a really frustrating result. Um, we had a lot better pace than, uh, than what we uh, sort of showed, uh, and you know, what our positions throughout most of the race uh, reflected. But yeah, that puncture on the medium tires in the, in the middle stint, or that ended the middle stint, I, I don't understand what happened there. The only thing I can think of is that perhaps there was uh, a bit of debris on the track from uh, when we were, we were uh, rear-ended by Verstappen uh, after uh, at the end of the first lap. If there was some debris on the track, then maybe we hit that and, uh, and got a puncture from that. Um, but yeah, here's a replay, obviously, of, uh, of the, the last incident uh, that... Uh, mechanical failure that ended our race um, but yeah I don't know I'm lost for words I don't know what happened out there 
Uh, it's very, very frustrating, but we will uh, have to fight back stronger next time. We didn't lose too much in the Constructors' Championship, so uh, the chances this season are far from over. Bad luck today. That must be incredibly disappointing. Your car seemed to be having some problems there. What was the cause? I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, we uh, obviously had uh, some kind of uh, failure with uh, the, the the power unit or drivetrain, but yeah, we uh, don't know uh, what it is fully yet, but uh, given the smoke uh, that was uh, pouring out the back of it, it, uh, it certainly doesn't look good, but uh, we'll look into it and uh, we'll resolve it and uh, hopefully make sure that uh, uh, this doesn't happen again. The car looks a little worse for wear. Can you walk us through what happened? Yeah, I was a bit distracted by uh, you know, what was going on with uh, with, with the power unit and yeah, uh, just uh, lost concentration for a moment and uh, found the wall. You lost your teammate today. Was it just not your day? I don't think it was, honestly. Lap one went badly. We got uh, a puncture for reasons I'm still not quite sure about. Uh, and then at the end of the day, the car just didn't make it to the end of the race, so... It must be incredibly frustrating to not make it to the end of a race due to car issues. What went wrong out there? Yeah, like I said, we don't really know uh, you know, for certain uh, what it is yet, but yeah, obviously the, the telltale smoke uh, is means it's something with a power unit, um, but yeah, uh, exactly what the problem is we don't know. We'll have to you know take it back to the factory, take things apart and see uh, exactly what uh, component failed and uh, what we need to work on. Great. Well, that's everything. All right, thank you, Claire. Well, rivalry not looking so good uh, with Sergio. After that, we're losing six to eight now, but we will hopefully uh, swing that around uh, in the next round. But anyway, Acclaim still uh, sort of hovers around the same uh, amount uh, after that. Uh, obviously, we can't expect to be gaining tons of Acclaim when uh, we're not making it uh, to the end. Unfortunately, we don't get a podium uh, this time, uh, so we uh, will lose that uh, objective. But uh, other than that, uh, we still have a lot of money coming in. Eight point three nine million dollars in the bank now. Is looking very robust right now. It's time for you to have a think about our profit margin and what areas of the operation might benefit from that money. And uh, ironically, uh, that same sponsorship deal uh, is the one uh, that has come up uh, to the end of its contract now. And uh, that is one with Slingshot Fuels. We will uh, renew that because in most cases, I think we can and should be uh, getting podium finishes. So uh, yeah, we'll be uh, doing that. But uh, anyway, uh, the activity timeline, uh, you can see we are filling it out here and uh, I think we'll have time uh, to do uh, every activity uh, on the timeline. Some of them, I always wonder if they're actually uh, worth doing like um, yeah you know, these ones like that say they will improve the morale in one department but reduce it in the other three you know it's overall it's you know the, the percentage is higher you know it's a, a improvement but yeah I always sort of question whether I should be doing those <laughs> um, but, but anyway I suppose it depends on what departments uh, you really want to to, to focus on uh, but anyway yeah, no resource points unfortunately coming in after that failure. Occasionally uh, they do uh, like to, uh, to, give, to give us some from that, but apparently we, did, we, we didn't learn anything, so yeah, that's a shame. But uh, anyway, let's uh, continue on with things. So the first thing we should do is find out which components failed, and it's the MGUK. That's not too bad. It's, I'd rather that fail than uh, control electronics uh, or uh, a, uh, uh, the other one we only get to of energy store uh, because obviously a uh, failure of one of those means we only have one for the remaining eight races uh, which to be fair is what we did la last year we did uh, well, last season we did eight races on one uh, energy store and it was fine uh, at the uh, control electronics not so much uh, but thankfully it was not a control electronics. That's really the only component I would be 
super worried about. Um, but anyway, uh, we're going to continue to invest in reliability uh, after that uh, to make sure uh, we don't have any further issues. So yeah, we want to try and uh, protect our components as much as possible. Somehow I missed the fact uh, we didn't get our uh, engine uh, power unit facility to spec 3. Uh, so we are doing that because the power unit is one of the uh, weaker components uh, of this car, so... Our new parts have completed without issue. They'll be on the car ready for the next race weekend. Uh, that is definitely an area we need to be working on. But uh, anyway, uh, upgrades going onto the car now. And uh, that is that uh, drag reduction upgrade, uh, I believe. So uh, that is awesome. And uh, we don't have the money to uh, afford any other ones. Uh, at the moment but uh, yeah uh, we are uh, you know steadily making improvements to the car and uh, you can see this our chassis department is uh, is actually very good it's the the best in the field by uh, a small margin so uh, yeah that uh, is very good as uh, we are just sort of looking through things and seeing where we stand I haven't really showed too much of this on camera our durability as well is uh, the best in the field so uh, yeah, we're looking very good uh, in that department. Departments need some assistance to reach a resolution here. But speaking of departments, uh, we have a department event, so let's uh, check this out. So the personnel department have uh, come up with a plan to phase out some old equipment uh, around the factory, and uh, that will uh, grant us 750 resource points for the low, low price of 50,000 k. No, that's not right, just 50k. <laughs> 50,000k would be 50 million. Um, but no, yeah, we will uh, We will do that. Thanks for dealing with that. The department's appreciated. Continuing through the timeline then, we get the master cyl cylinder upgrade. I believe that was an ultimate brake upgrade. Uh, certainly a brake upgrade of some variety. But uh, that successfully uh, goes onto the car. And uh, we still have more work on the brakes uh, to do. Uh, but we can't afford it at the moment. Continuing through again, and okay. uh, we we'll get the new parts come through the fabrication process. We'll have them with us for the next Grand Prix. The uh, suspension geometry upgrade that was an ultimate tire wear We've upgrade. Got an issue we'd like your input on. Uh, but anyway, uh, durability durability department uh, need our help once again. They want to schedule more time off during the day uh, to boost morale, uh, but it will cost us a lot of resource points. Twenty percent more morale. Uh, for 750 resource points. I don't think that's a worthwhile trade-off, unfortunately. You handled that well. Thank you. We continue through the timeline again, and our power unit facility upgrade comes in, and that uh, will continue through uh, until we get interrupted by another durability department Would you event. take a look at this for us, please? And they are uh, very uh, busy, it seems. So let's check this one out. So thanks to a recent breakthrough in R&D, uh, the durability department to finish some work ahead of schedule uh, basically we can tell them to uh, continue working on R&D or use their spare time to uh, basically film some promotional stuff we're going to go for the R&D uh, that will give us 750 resource points which is exactly what we need right now thanks I appreciate you taking the time to help out and the reason that is so important is because now we have enough resource points uh, along with the facility upgrade uh, to the power unit uh, department to go for an ultimate engine power upgrade uh, and that will be uh, well in time for the Belgian Grand Prix so even if that fails I think we can fix it uh, in that amount of time so uh, that is awesome but other than that then I don't think there is really too much else left to cover for this one so I'll say thank you so much for watching all the way to the end I really appreciate it feel free to, feel free to give me some feedback in the comments. It's always very helpful. And I'll see you later.